In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at the quantize panel and the arrange view grid. Not the most exciting topics, but I think that these are neglected areas of study within Studio One. But if we can improve our understanding of how these two function and even relate to one another, I think that this can really help us in our music production. Now we can access the quantize panel by coming up to view and then additional views and quantize. A simpler way to access it would be by clicking the Q button here. We can hide that and show it above in our song there. And before we get into the quantize panel, just know that at the top of the song, we also have a panel here where we can make adjustments to our quantize settings and grid. And actually we're gonna start here first. Now all the way to the left here, we have a button for input quantize. And by clicking this button, we're telling Studio One to automatically quantize any MIDI performance that we may be recording to whatever our quantize value is set to, which is here. And if I go ahead and click on this down arrow, then we can see that we have a variety of different quantize values to choose from, all the way from a whole bar up to 16th notes with a 100% swing. And the next setting that we have is for time base. By default, this is gonna be on bars, and I think that's what most of us are gonna be working with, but we do have some additional options here. And just notice that the arrange view grid here will change depending on what we have selected. Uh, not only with our quantize value, but with our time base setting as well. So if we move from bars to seconds, then we can see that we have that these ticks that have changed within our timeline there. We also have samples and frames. And I'm just going to come back to bars, and we're just basically going to focus on this setting throughout this tutorial. We next have our snap time base, which will be on adaptive by default. And before we go into the settings here, just know that right now snap to grid is currently engaged. And this is the button for turning that on and off. We can also press in on our keyboard. So if I press in and we now have snap to grid engaged, and you can see that as I come here, we can see that this is snapping to our quarter note quantize value setting here. So if I go ahead and change this to say eighth notes, we can see that our range view grid has changed and now we're snapping to that eighth note value. So this is the beginning of bar two to bar three. We have eight subdivisions to represent our eighth notes and we are getting that snap effect to uh, that setting because our snap to grid is on. If I press in and turn that off, then we can see how the cursor moves freely then. Now I'll go ahead and press in to re-engage that. So what does the default setting of adaptive mean? This means that snapping will occur at the nearest logical subdivision of the current time base based on our zoom level. And what does this mean exactly? Now, if I were to change this to a smaller subdivision, say to uh, 132nd, then we can see that we are snapping at this zoom level. But if I were to zoom out a bit here, now we are snapping to quarter notes. So that's what the adaptive is. It's going to take into account whatever your zoom level is. Now the next setting that we have available is bar. And if I go ahead and change that to bar, then we're just going to snap by bar. We then have quantize, which is going to make use of whatever we have set as the quantize. And it doesn't look like it's snapping because we're zoomed out pretty far. But as you can see, if, if you notice, it wasn't uh, behaving as it did with the adaptive setting. So if we come in and zoom in, then we can see that we are snapping to that 32nd note setting. The final one that we have is frames. And then with this, we're going to snap to frames. And I'll go ahead and change this back to adaptive. And then at the below, we, other, we also have some other options available to us. By default, Snap to Grid is going to be on, and we can see we just saw how that uh, performs or behaves. We also have Snap to Cursor and Loop, so in that instance, our, the, our snapping will also occur to wherever our song position cursor is or our loop settings as well. We can choose to have it snap to events, and we can also have Relative to Grid. And we can actually, this is not an either or 
setting when we are making uh, selections here. So I can choose that. And then as you can see, the uh, snap to grid still remains there. So we're adding on functionality here. Now the relative to grid sounds a little bit strange. I'll go ahead and turn that on. Actually, let me first, I'm going to press W to zoom out a bit. And I'm just going to double click to add an empty event here. And we can see, let me change this to quarter note. So we are snapping by quarter note, as you can see here with our empty event. I'm going to press N to turn the snap to grid off for a moment and just move this kind of in a random position there. I will turn snap to grid back on and then select relative grid. So now if you notice, we have this kind of odd position with that our event is in and you may have some that are like this just because of how you recorded it, but you want to maintain that position, but within another bar. And this is going to allow you to do this. So as I drag this, we then snap to that relative odd position. And so that's what that setting is going to allow you to do. And then if I go ahead and take that setting off, we're on quarter note, we are, we should return to snapping to our quarter notes. Let's go ahead and move on to our quantize panel. Again, we can access that by clicking the Q there. We can also detach this panel, our pan panel by clicking on that arrow, clicking the arrow here again. We can reattach. And starting from the left, we have two different modes. We have grid mode and groove. For this tutorial, we're strictly going to focus on the grid mode. And just to the right of this, we have an area for choosing our quantized value, which is going to function exactly the same as what we have here, and they correlate with one another. So if I were to, ch to choose a 16th note, then or 8th note, we can see that we have changed to 8th note up above. If I change to 16th, then we can see that this changes, and so on. 30 seconds up to 64th. I'll come back to the quarter note setting. We next have an area for setting even further how our quantized value will function. By default, this is set to straight, and we have the option to apply swing when we are uh, in straight with or using the straight setting. So I'm actually going to close out the quantized panel here, and then let's double click on our empty MIDI event there, and I'm going to open up the quantized panel within our editor. And this is just going to give us a better idea of how this swing setting works. So I'm going to change our quantized value to eighth notes. Come to the close hi-hat and just click once. I'm going to duplicate that by pressing D. And then now I'm going to press Control A on my keyboard to, to select all of those MIDI notes. And if I go ahead and play back, let me turn the loop on. We can hear that that's just a straight uh, eighth notes playing back with our hi-hat. But if I were to go ahead and introduce a bit of swing, I'll take this up to say 64%. We do need to hit apply. And we can see that our notes have adjusted visually here. And if I go ahead and play back, and while this is playing back, I can make even further adjustments, raise that up to 84%, apply. come to 9% and apply that, come to 0, and we're back to the regular uh, setting. We then have settings for triplet, which will be three notes in the space of two. We've got quintole, which is five notes in the space of four, and finally then uh, septole, which will be seven notes in the space of eight. And if we go ahead and click on these, we can see how the ticks within our timeline will adjust to give you an idea of what's going on there. Moving on, we now have start. And this is basically going to affect how much the quantize function is going to move our uh, MIDI notes in relation to the grid. So if I, while these are selected, I'm just going to make these a bit smaller. 
and I'm gonna press in to disengage the snap to grid and just move these out a bit from their original position. Turn that snap to grid back on. Now, if I change the start at 100%, when we quantize, so as you can see, we have our eighth note setting here and also above in our main song page. So if we were to press quantize, we can do that by hitting apply or by pressing Q on our keyboard. These will then move and snap to the eighth note um, grid lines here, which makes sense. So I'll go ahead and press Q and we can see that those have moved as we expected. I'll control Z to undo. Now if we change the start from 100% though, this is going to not be as precise for lack of better way of describing it. So I'll move it to 45%, press Q on my uh, corded keyboard again, and you can see that these have not quite moved all the way to that eighth note division here. I'll control Z to undo, and then let's go even further down to 16%, I'll press Q again, even less movement. And if we take this to 100%, I'll press Q, now we can see that they are fully moved to that subdivision. And as you can see, we also have an area for N, which basically is going to determine how our quantize action is going to affect the ends of our MIDI notes. And that was set at 65%, and that's the reason why they did not fully expand out to represent an eighth note. If I were to raise this, let me actually control Z, and then I'm going to raise this up to 100%. Our start is at 100%, so this means that these should move to the beginning of that uh, eighth note subdivision, and the MIDI notes should also expand out to that full division as well. So let's go ahead and apply that. And so that's how that functions. I'll control Z, leaving the start at 100%, but then changing the end to, say, 73%. Apply that, or press Q. And you can see that these aren't fully extending out. And so that's how those function. Now, velocity is basically for when you're using the groove mode. So right now we can't make any adjustments here if I click in the, in the field. Uh, if I choose groove, then we can see we can make some adjustments there. We then have a range setting, and this is basically going to determine the sensitivity of the quantize action and as far as which notes it's going to actually apply to. So I'm actually going to just delete those notes out, change our quantize value to quarter note. I will add a closed head in and just duplicate that out. Control A to select them all. I'm going to turn the snap off for a second and then just shrink these down a little bit. And I'm going to select each of these individually and just move them a little bit from their original position and get further away as we progress throughout this bar. Now with our quantized value still set at quarter, let's go ahead and apply and see what happens. And again, we I can hit Q or I'll just use the apply button. And then you can see that this one here has moved. The others have not, and actually I think that's just because I didn't have those selected. So let me control Z and then control A to select them all. I'm gonna actually change the, I'll leave the end at 73. Now I'll apply this with all of them selected and we can see that they've each moved to that uh, quarter note subdivision. I'll control Z. And then we don't have kind of a visual display to see how this is going to affect the notes. So you're really just gonna have to experiment with the range uh, value. So let me put this at 52% and let's see which of these will be affected by our quantize action. Okay, so the first three there, I'll control Z to undo. Let's take that up to 77% and apply. Okay, and so all of them. So you can see with these higher percentages, it's going to increase the sensitivity of which notes it's going to apply the quantize action to. And finally, we have a presets area so that if you're experimenting with different arrangements of settings and you'd like to keep all of them, you can save them uh, multiple presets within each of these five banks here. So with these current adjustments, if we want to save that and then continue experimenting, we can just 
click on this plus symbol here and I'm just gonna come up with a generic name. Let's just say example one, I'll click okay. Now we can see that this populates in the field there. And if I go ahead and make a change here to our quantize uh, value and maybe to the end value, let's click the plus and save that as example two. I'll press enter and save that. We can see that now these are available to come back to. If we'd like to more easily change between these settings, then we could just choose different banks and then save them within there. And then that way we can just click A, B, C, and so on to quickly change between how these different settings will affect our MIDI data. And something else that I'd like to talk about really quickly before we end the video is these two areas here. We've got quantize on track and quantize. Now when we're in the MIDI editor, these are not available to select. But if I were to go ahead and let's close out the editor and with our event or MIDI part highlighted, I'm gonna open up the quantize panel again. And you can see that the first one is automatically active here, highlighted in blue, the quantize. So in this way, whatever adjustments we make here in the quantize panel, it's going to apply that to the individual MIDI notes within the event. So as you saw how I only had that one MIDI note selected and the action only affected that a moment ago, uh, and I had to control A to select everything. Now, if we're outside of the editor and we're just working in the arrange view, if we press Q, it's going to apply it to all MIDI information within this event. But what this other uh, button here, quantize on track is, let me zoom in a bit. And I'm going to take the snap off for just a second and move this event back a bit, turn snap back on. We do have the option to select that quantize on track. And then in this way, when we pre perform the quantize action, it's going to apply it to the whole event and not the individual notes. So let me change this quantize value to say quarter note and I'll press Q on my keyboard. And this whole event should just be moved forward to the beginning of bar one and actually it applied to the MIDI notes. And that is because Q will kind of override what we have set here and uh, apply to the, the individual MIDI notes. And I'm glad that that actually happened to clarify that. So if you saw those move, the movement of the notes within the uh, MIDI part here, I'm just gonna control Z and you can see that now they're back to as they were. So I'm not going to press Q, but I'm actually gonna press apply and this is what you need to do to apply it to your MIDI part in order to make it quantize. Okay, so now that's the behavior that we were looking for. So just remember, you need to hit the apply button in order to uh, quantize your events that are on the track.